Okay, so here's what we have. Um, you have a bowl. The bowl has sharp edges. That's for a reason. You have a sharpened stick. You have a thin sponge. It's actually been cut in half. It's thinner than when they come in the package. You have a wire. And you have a wooden rib. It should be a sharp one. Some of these are dull on the end. You need a sharp one. And then the bowl with water. It should be about three quarters full. If your thigh level's too low, there's some blocks of wood around, just like these, that you can put your feet up on. You want your thighs to be kind of parallel to the wheel head, all right? Not angled way, way down. Get the clay. The smoother, rounder part's gonna be the bottom. The first step is the hit. Notice the rings? That's to help you center. The more centered you can get it now, the better. If you kind of look straight forward, elbows out, you can just plop it down. So, straighten it. Turn the wheel on. Check it. Here's how you check it. Obviously, you can just look at it, but if I just hold my hand and make little marks, whatever part hits my fingers first, obviously, it's sticking out. So then you can compress that part. Um, so what I want to do is I want to seal the bottom. Notice there's no water yet. So on the right-hand side, I'm going to get my finger, compress the clay, and then roll it down and out. Now what I just did there is I made a water seal. That way water doesn't get under it and loosen it. So here's the first uh, form that we need to know with our hands. Elbows or forearms on your thighs, hands touching. You have a triangle of strength. Your hands are contacted, your elbow is on one leg, your other elbow is on the other leg. You have three points of contact. If one of these points goes, an elbow goes up, or you lose this, you lose your strength, and the pot starts throwing you around. So keep these points of contact whenever possible. So for centering, the very first move is your left hand is going to curve with your thumb up. So left hand curved with your thumb up. Right hand, kind of like curved karate chop. And what's going to happen is that right hand is going to just wrap around your thumb. Now you can relax your fingers and still have your hand in the same spot. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get water on there. Don't overdo the water. You're just making slip on the surface of the clay. I like to have my sponge handy for that. Uh, so my left hand is just rotting. My top hand is going to push down on the clay. My elbows are down and notice my elbows in towards my torso. And I'm going to just lean forward with my whole torso and kind of push down slowly. Now what's going to happen is we want to center the top. Notice this is the tallest point. That should be. The clay always likes to go to wherever there's a point. Don't worry about the sides. It's going to get more lumpy at first. Rehydrate your hands if you need to. I'm going to go down just a little bit more. This clay is really nice. Thanks, Ella. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just reverse direction. So my top hand is now not doing as much work. My left hand is going to do more work. So my left hand now is going to elbow in, and I'm going to lean forward. So it's going to grow in height. My top hand is just kind of holding things in. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to do that a few times. Don't go down too far. It's hard to bring it back up. The bottom, sometimes I just take my fingers mm -hmm. and pick up any just loose stuff. Here's why you have a bowl with sharp edges. You can scrape your hands on it. All right. So I'm almost there. You don't need perfection, but the more centered it is, the better, obviously. Okay, one last time. Down. If you're struggling with really hard clay, you're going to have trouble. Nice. Even. So what I'm going to do is equal pressure in both hands. Wait. Slow release. If you ever freak out and you go, ah, and take your hands away fast, you're going to make it worse. So even if you have a problem, always release slowly, and you won't have as many issues. Notice the top is still the highest point. Okay. So now, we're going to open it. So for that, here's the move. Left hand, thumb. Right hand. Pick up your thumb uh, as if it were like a tool, not even your thumb. So put your forefinger on your thumbnail. Now their finger's kind of around it. See this? I can kind of like steer and control with my thumb. I don't want to push on the center. I want to push just down from the center. So it pushes it all down. But that pushes it center. Make sure there's a little water in there. Go slow and it's going down. I think that's about a quarter inch. Now I'm going to check. Because I can always trim it off later. 
All right, so that's the thumb. Next one, we're gonna open the base. So for that, doesn't matter which hands, but overlap the tops of your hands. Thumbs, like this. Oh, it's a heart. Oh, that's Aww. cute. Okay, so here's where that goes. Your fingers touch the wheel head. Elbows down, thumbs in the bottom. Your thumbs are gonna spread out. The goal is a flat bottom if you're doing a cylinder. If you were doing a bowl, we would do this instead. Kind of a spatula thing. But we're gonna do it with a cylinder. So I'm gonna get in there, and I'm gonna spread those thumbs by curling them in. Now I'm gonna spatula the bottom, so that's left hand, right hand on top. And this is compressing the floor of the pot. This is important, if you don't, you might have S cracks. Probably will have S cracks. But this is compressing and aligning the particles on the bottom of the pot. So this is the most important hand position here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put your thumbs kind of together, and then middle fingers together, four fingers up. Pinkies are kind of useless here, just let them go wherever it works for you. You see the ring fingers are right next to the middle finger for support, okay? Now take your right hand and just put it one finger lower. So now your right, your middle finger is touching your left ring finger. So you need your inside hand to be higher than your outside hand. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a bubble. Uh, what I mean by that is it's like a groove with extra clay above it, and I'm gonna lift it up. When you move clay by lifting it up on the wheel, that's called throwing. So what I'm gonna do, my thumbs are contacting, my elbows are down, my fingers are in, my pinky's up, because otherwise it was kinda in the way. Um, I'm gonna push in on the outside a little bit and make a little bit of a groove. I'm pushing out. Now I have that clay bubble and I'm gonna lift. What's really important is the clay above it, it should be smooth. If you have any weird sharp edges, stop and smooth them out. So here we go. I'm gonna go up and in towards the center. That's why my pinky's up. When I get near the top, I'm gonna pause and release. You know why I had to pause? Isn't this spinning? If I didn't release, I haven't touched the whole pot yet. I have to pause so I touch the whole pot. Now, that's a pretty good move, but you might not be able to do that right away. That's okay, you can do little bites at a time. I gotta keep my hands nice and wet. Uh-oh, I can't reach. If that happens, just get your fingers in there, it'll spread. All right, notice the base is kind of wide, so I'm pushing in even more, making a new bubble. So I'm pushing in and out at the same time, above it. Still up and in, but this time, a little straighter. Slow and steady. I'm relaxing my pressure as I get near the top. The clay usually is thinner on the top. The goal is equal thickness. So I'm going more pressure to less pressure. Now the clay's getting kind of thin, so I don't want to go too much further. All right, what I want to do is, first I want to take a little bit of that extra clay on the bottom. It's like a buttress, it curves out. So that's where the sharpened stick comes in. You're gonna hold it like a pencil with the point facing towards you with your right hand. I'm gonna rest my arm down and rest my fingers on the wheel head. It's about a 45 degree angle. I'm gonna take my left hand and I'm gonna brace it. And it's gonna carve it in. So I'm removing extra clay. Then, the curved end does this, it compresses it to get it out of the way. You might want to slow the wheel. If you have trouble, you can always turn it off. Now I'm going to angle it down to scrape all that away. All right, this is where the rib comes in. If you want to do shaping or if you want to do a bigger pot, I need to compress and align the clay particles. So it's kind of like throwing. I have hands on the inside, hands on the outside, only I'm not moving clay up this time. I'm just kind of smoothing it out. <coughs> the rib, it has a finger place. Hold it with your right hand, lean it, tilt it. Otherwise you're scraping, you're actually carving. I want to compress. My hands on the inside is just there for support, but make sure it's lubricated. All right, now I could just go straight up. See my thumb is bridging out as soon as I can reach for support. There we go. The last thing is the rim statement. So the rim, if it ever gets too thin, you can do this move earlier. Take your left hand, thumb, and forefinger. Take your right forefinger and make a letter H. See the H? So here's why that happens. My left hand goes like this on the rim. My right finger goes on top. So this allows me to compress the rim a little bit without smushing the pot. To get it off the wheel, go to low speed. 
take the wire, hold it in your hands, let that part go to the ends of your hands, thumbs down. Okay, push down and pull tight and go back towards yourself. Don't lift it back up right away until you're clear of the pot. You know how many people just slice right through their pot when they come back up? Not good. Okay. To get it off of there, scrape your hands. We have tools that are pot lifters and whatnot, but it's great if you can just get comfortable doing it yourself. If you have somewhat dry hands, just go here. 